Hello, my name is Dominique and in this video I will be addressing the question what is KIF-1A and how does it function from a basic science perspective. Throughout this video we will address three main questions. First we will answer what is a KIF protein? Second, how does KIF-1A function in our bodies? And lastly, we'll touch upon how could mutations in the KIF-1A gene influence KIF-1A function. Starting with our first question, what does it mean to be a KIF protein? Well, KIF is a term we use to identify members of the kinesin superfamily of proteins. In our bodies, we have about 50 different types of KIF proteins, and we rely on all of these different types of KIFs to ensure our bodies are operating as a healthy system. Now, all KIF proteins are what we call motor proteins, meaning that KIF proteins use a cellular fuel source to transport cargo inside of our cells. In a way, we can think of them as the cargo-carrying trucks that use a gasoline fuel source to transport and to deliver cargo to where it is needed within our cells. But in order to understand how KIF-1A transports cargo within our cells, we need to understand the role of KIF-1A within our bodies. KIF proteins tend to be organ or cell type specific. For example, KIF-1A is predominantly found throughout our nervous system. Specifically, KIF-1A facilitates cargo transport within our nerve cells, otherwise known as neurons. KIF-1A has been shown to transport many types of cargo needed to keep our nerve cells functioning properly, such as building blocks to create connections with other cells or nutrients to keep cells healthy. But before we progress any further, let's think about what cargo transport might look like and why it's important. On one end of our nerve cell, we have the area in which cargo are produced and packaged up ready to be shipped out. But the problem lies in the fact that this cargo may have to travel an extremely long distance down this segment here called the axon in order to make its delivery at its destination. And our bodies rely on these deliveries to be timely and accurate for our nervous systems to function properly. Our cells want what they want when it is requested. In order to make this process more efficient, our nerve cells rely on KIFs, including KIF-1A, to transport cargo up and down the axon in a process that looks like this. In this video, what we are observing are cargo, labeled in red, being transported up and down the axon, facilitated in part by KIF proteins. But in order to understand specifically how KIF-1A is involved in this process, we need to zoom in one level further. We need to zoom inside of our nerve cell to reveal the main players in KIF-1A mediated cargo transport. The first player we need to introduce is known as the microtubule. Microtubules are supportive structures that line the inside of the axon and are the tracks along which KIFs can transport cargo. We tend to think of them as acting like a roadway or a highway. And with our roadway established, next we will find our machinery that is physically moving the cellular cargo. On the roadway, this is our cargo carrying truck, but on the microtubule runway, this is our KIF-1A motor attached to cargo. So we have a road and we have our truck. The next thing that we need to confirm is that the truck has an engine, or as we call it for a KIF protein, the motor domain. This is the region or domain of the protein that is converting chemical energy into mechanical energy or working like a motor. Now we have our roadway and we have our truck attached to cargo and we have confirmed that there is an engine. The last thing that we need is a fuel source. In the context of our truck, we need gasoline so we can fill up the gas tank and off the truck can go to deliver cargo where it is needed. The same is true for KIF-1A, except instead of gasoline, it uses a cellular fuel source known as ATP. And when KIF-1A is in the presence of ATP, what is achieved is movement, like we can observe in this artist's rendition of a KIF protein carrying cargo along the microtubule roadways on a mission to deliver this cargo to where it is needed within the cell. So far, the scientific community has uncovered quite a few facts about KIF-1A movement, such as 
One, we know that KIF-1A is an extremely efficient cargo transporter compared to other KIFs. KIF-1A has actually been called the molecular marathon runner because it transports cargo over very long distances within the cell. Two, we know that KIF-1A needs to be attached to cargo to move long distances. In other words, it can't be driving around with an empty truck bed. It needs to be loaded up with cargo before long distance transport can occur. Three, we know that KIF-1A exhibits unique behavior while transporting cargo. It walks in a very specific way in comparison to other KIFs. And lastly, four, as mentioned before, the cargo that Kifone carries needs to be delivered in the right place at the right time to keep our nerve cells healthy. And for our last question to address, let's talk about how could mutations influence Kifone function. The time of this recording, late 2019, is an exciting and hopeful time as there are many new research studies surfacing that focus specifically on how these mutations affect KIF-1A function. Many of these studies are unified by the same general questions about canned mutations. Where are KIF-1A mutations occurring in regards to the protein structure, and why might mutations in these locations matter? For now, we are going to divide our KIF-1A protein structure into three domains, the cargo binding domain, the stock, in the motor domain. And as a reminder, when we say the word domain, we are referring to a specific region of the protein. Let's start with the cargo binding domain. This is the region of KIF-1A that physically attaches to the cargo that it is trying to carry. A KIF-1A protein with a mutation here may have no issue physically walking along the microtubule, but has great difficulty holding on to the cargo that needs to be transported. Or conversely, a mutation in this region could make KIF-1A too good at holding onto cargo so that it cannot release cargo once it is delivered. As you can imagine, both of these scenarios would make cargo transport very difficult. Next, we will talk about the KIF-1A stock. The stock is an important structural component to our KIF-1A protein, much like a truck would need a frame, beams, and axles to hold the structure together. Just imagine if the frame of your car was loose and unstable as you were trying to drive down the road. If a mutation in the stock of KIF-1A is affecting foundational structural components needed to make KIF-1A a functioning transporter, then transport would become very difficult. Lastly, let's discuss the KIF-1A motor domain. Currently, we know that the majority of KIF-1A mutations are found within the motor domain of KIF-1A. As mentioned before, this domain is similar to the engine of the truck. One potential with a mutation in this region is that it cannot use its fuel source efficiently. It would be like filling up your truck with plenty of gasoline, but the truck would have no way to use that fuel source to initiate movement. Or staying with our gasoline metaphor, there are certain mutations that could affect the gas tank of KIF-1A. Maybe this KIF-1A mutant has no problem using a fuel source to initiate movement, but the gas tank is leaky, meaning it can't keep the fuel source within its engine long enough to be utilized. One last thing to consider is that the motor domain is the area of KIF-1A that is in contact with the microtubule roadway. In a way, the motor domain also acts as the tires of KIF-1A. Mutations in this part of the motor domain could result in a loss of traction, meaning it is difficult for KIF-1A to grab onto the microtubule roadway. This would be like trying to drive a truck on a slippery, snowy road. Transport would become insufficient and difficult. As we know, KIF-1A-associated neurological disorder is caused by mutations in the KIF-1A gene. You may have also heard the term genetic or pathological variant when talking about a KIF-1A mutation. A genetic variant or genetic variance is a term used to describe an alteration or change in an individual's genetic code. In the case of CAND, this change in the genetic code is the specific mutation of the KIF protein. For example, if we look at this representative genetic report, we first see the gene that is the variant. In this case, it is the KIF-1A gene. We then get information about the specific mutation at the DNA level. 
Next, in this variant column, we can see how this mutation at the DNA level has resulted in a change at the protein level. In this report, for example, the mutation at the DNA level has resulted in a specific amino acid called arginine to turn into a different amino acid called proline. And as a reminder, amino acids are the building blocks of proteins. We can also think of this 254 mutation as the address on the gene where this change has occurred. The zygosity of this gene tells us information about how many copies of this mutation there are at the chromosomal level. And lastly, the rightmost column tells us how the variant we are looking at is classified. In this case, the variant is considered to be pathogenic, meaning it may be linked to a certain disease or disorder. Now, because CAND can result from so many different mutations in different locations within the KIF1A gene, we would expect that patients are going to be affected by their mutation differently than other patients. We call this a difference in phenotype or phenotypic expression. A phenotype is an individual's observable characteristics based on an individual's genotype or what is going on at the genotype level like we see in this example genetic report. So it makes sense that if our canned patients have unique mutations, we tend to see a unique phenotype for that patient, aka a set of symptoms that is unique to that specific individual. We are beginning to learn more about how these problems occurring at the cellular level result in a wide range of challenges and symptoms experienced by people living with canned, such as spastic paraplegia, hypotonia, ataxia, epilepsy, optic nerve atrophy, cerebellar atrophy, and peripheral neuropathy. While there is no cure or treatment for CAND yet, KIF1A.org is a global community of families, researchers, clinicians, and supporters dedicated to improving the lives of those affected by KIF1A-associated neurological disorder and accelerating research to find a cure. As a patient-focused foundation spearheaded by parents of children with CAND, KIF1A.org exists to connect and support families affected by this disorder. To learn more about CAND and the latest developments in research, visit kifwane.org or contact us by emailing impact at kifwane.org.